It's beer o'clock on Miedel Craft Beer. Today we've got a beer from Vocation Brewery. Picked it up in Tesco as part of a four pack. This is the special edition low altitude table beer at 2.8% ABV in a 330 milliliter can. Now, as most of you know, I'm always kind of like, I'll always push a table beer or a, a 2.5 or a 2.8% beer. I'll always push it back to the back of the fridge you know i'm always pulling beers round it out to review um i to be honest with you it's a bit of a disclaimer really i've got no real interest in drinking like really low abv beer it just doesn't float my boat but i reviewed a day of beer recently a table beer from them and it was terrific 2.8 percent really lovely really drinkable it almost reminded me of a german radler so let's give this a go. From vocation, let's give this a go. 2.8%. I think the reason why, I think it's just a mental block for me. I spent a lot of my late teenage years in working men's clubs in kind of like that that's what was in barry back in the time with grandparents parents family parties that sort of thing and it was the local offering the local the local beer uh, you know probably that beer there but that's 3.7 percent um but i just found them a bit wishy-washy i found them a bit like there wasn't much going on in terms of flavor and it was that like it, it was just the low abv that i associated it with but as with the, the Dea beer, it's, it's totally untrue. It's totally untrue. It's just a mental thing for me to try and get over. What I'm trying to say is I really like my stronger IPAs these days and stouts and porters. And, you know, it really, I, I like a big, strong, creamy, rich mouthfeel on my beer. Right, we're getting down the port of this one, and it's uh, it's a funny one, isn't it? The the the, the carbonation is quite large, um, but it, it it is dissipating quite quickly, and um, there is etching on the bottom of this glass, mind you, so it is it is causing some extra bits of carbonation. It'll knock the beer a, a little bit flat quicker, um, so if you're using a beer with an etched glass, drink the beer a little bit quicker. Otherwise, you'll end up with a flat pint after about 15 minutes. Get it down, you. <laughs> so straw coloured, nice and hazy. Let's get the aroma. Absolutely terrific on the aroma. It's really tropical. Really zesty, lemony. Grapefruit, orange peel, Grapefruit peel. Whoa. Yeah, absolutely. This is this is terrific aroma. Let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. Fair play, fair play. Stone the crows, stone the crows. This is this is really good. I'm quickly putting behind me that stigma of low ABV beer, that kind of, I need to put it out of my mind very quickly. I need to kind of forget my youth, if you like, forget, forget beers like this and, and just think about we're in 2022 and this brewery's just doing some terrific things with beer at the moment. This is so, pardon me, this is so flavoursome. So flavoursome for a 2.8% for a ABV beer.
passion fruit, mango, grapefruit, orange peel, fleshy blood orange. Good levels of carbonation, pushes the beer on the inside of the mouth, releases more of that flavour. You've got taste buds all over your mouth, top of the mouth, cheeks, all the way down to the back of the throat there. That carbonation just can kind of edge that beer into crevices of, the, of, of your mouth where you may kind of not if the beer was flat if it's just kind of just flying down then then you're not really going to experience that fantastic amount of hops in the beer this really is this really is something to behold i'm almost shocked by how much I'm enjoying this beer. And out, all, out of all of the Tesco beers I've reviewed, I picked up the Tesco beers probably end of May. I picked up all the Beaver Towns, uh, some of the vocations, I picked up some Buxton beers, and because they all got reviewed first, put them all first because they were double IPAs and they were IPAs and they were pale ales and, and they were interesting kind of, what else? Um, even the Fallon Fall IPA I, I reviewed before that because it was 4% ABV and it turned out to be dross. When in fact, when in fact, this is probably one of the best beers of the bunch in terms of outright flavour, in terms of what it's doing to my palate. It's just terrific. The drinkability, because it's only 2.8% ABV, the brewer, brewer only needs a small amount of kind of malt really to use to get it to that 2.8%, means that there's a higher level of water quality, there's a higher level of water to begin with. It's just so much more refreshing. It's so flavoursome. Passion fruit, mango, grapefruit, orange peel, fleshy blood orange. Just really terrific. Really, really terrific beer. Really good. I mean look at it. Look at look at look at the look at this beer. Look at the lacing and everything else that's going on in that glass. Nice and hazy. If that was just handed to me in a bar, you know, someone said try that. I, I quite happily, you know, thank you very much for my first beer of the day. This is great. Um, a brew for all you high flyers looking to ease back down to earth. This breezy table beer has a low ABV that lets its big hoppy flavour soar. Um, hoppy, tropical and hazy. Bursting with big aromas, we've chosen a heady blend of Simcoe, Sabro and Talus hops. Enjoy tastes of tropical fruit, stone fruit, and a hint of coconut. Your beer, your vocation. A brewery is just another factory making a product. It's our people and their passion that make this our vocation. I've generally loved everything that the vocation brewery's done. Um, they've had a close association with Tesco for a number of years now. I think the first time they really come onto my scene, like they were just a little microbrewery before that. Um, there's videos on YouTube of other YouTubers visiting um, Vocation and a tiny little brewery at the time. And then they got this deal. They got this deal to go into Tesco and they produced this blueberry muffin stout and it completely changed the fortunes of this brewery unbelievably changed the fortunes of this brewery um i remember reviewing that beer i remember absolutely loving that beer i don't think they make it anymore which is an absolute shame um they got to version two i think they maybe dialed it back a little bit and it just never quite made it after that but it was a three pound can of craft beer that was tremendous and it was the real kind of first early signs of can craft beer in the supermarkets and it was a kind of an experiment between vocation and tesco and it worked look where we are now 2022 probably six years later you you look at the supermarkets as the morrison's tesco sainsbury's max and spencer's little aldi they're all even home bargains, they're all getting involved in can craft beer. They're all getting kind of, uh, and it all kind of started with vocation. Um, so it's, it's fitting really that I'm drinking this 2.8% ABV table beer. And I'm still really enjoying it. I'm still really enjoying their beer. There's still that kind of class leading, them and salt, I would say. Class leading supermarket kind of 
craft beer brands. They're really kind of doing wonders for people to, who are on a bit of a budget. They can't afford bottle shop prices, but they still want to drink decent beer. I'm going to rate this. I think that's a monumental, terrific, lovely, lovely, drinkable, refreshing beer. It, it's got that same kind of Daya table beer, kind of, it almost tastes like a, a lemon Radler. It, it's just fantastic. I'm going to give that a Stone the Crows 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10 from Relail Craft Beer. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom. Cheers.